I'm Michael Hill with Canine Chronicle TV, and today I am talking with Claire Wish Abraham on the other side of the country in Virginia. She is famous for Mountain View Kennels, most notably for German wire-haired pointers, but several other breeds as well. She's been involved in the breed for over two decades. Her daughter is a very involved handler and breeder as well. And she's now actively judging in addition to still breeding. So we're gonna talk about your entire progression and life in dogs with your family and everything involved in that. So why don't we start with how you got involved in dogs in the first place, Claire? Well, the very first dog that I was involved with breed-wise as far as with the AKC was a Chesapeake Bay Retriever. And we were living in Alabama and Kelly was an infant. And I was looking for a dog to do obedience with. And I bought a Chesapeake Bay Retriever from a backyard breeder in Alabama. Yeah. And I got a CD on her and started liking this dog show thing. And (laughs) I came to the Fredericksburg show because my parents were still living up here. And I saw the most beautiful Chesapeake I've ever seen, champion Fitzhugh's Bag the Limit, who was at the time a multiple best in show dog shown by Megan Connor. Mm. And um, I loved the dog. And my grandmother was there and she said, well, you should get a show dog. So it just so happened, we reached out and he had been bred that weekend to a bitch that Betsy Humor um, from Eastern Waters uh, had. And I got a puppy from that litter, I guess, you know, six months later, five months later, Um, and it was kind of weird because I was the very first dog show I took that dog to was, um, during desert storm. My husband was a pilot in the military. So we were up here in Virginia and we went to the show at Skyline Kennel Club and my dad went with me to the dog show. And uh, like many dog people, I was involved in horses, three day eventing, dressage. We fox hunted growing up here in Virginia. And that was my progression in, in how I started in dogs. And then um, I loved the Chesapeake's. We did a lot with them. Um, and then I happened upon the bench show in Chicago and we were benched beside these beautiful German wire pointers that belonged to Helen Witt. And uh, Kelly and I, Helen George, Kelly and I were at the show and um, I was fascinated by these beautiful wow. wire hairs. Yeah. And uh, one of them that she had there was Storm. And another one that she had was Schultz, Rip Snorter's Thunderheart. And one thing led to another. And it wasn't too long when we had a wire hair, a beautiful wire hair uh, puppy. And I was, that was an outlaw. And Kelly showed him in juniors. And, um, And then I was able to get his mother. And she became my foundation bitch, champion Rip Snorter's lightning strike. Oh, love that. Yeah, so we kind of phased out of the Chesapeake's. They were a little bit more dog than I could handle yeah. at that point with two small kids and being in the military and that sure. sort of thing. So the wire hairs were more what we were doing in our lifestyle at that point. We, we did enjoy bird hunting and um, the kids were at an age where we were introducing them to the outdoors and the wire hairs yeah. fit and we moved forward. Um, so you were working them in addition to showing them? Absolutely. The, fir- the second national that I went to, the first national was in 97. The second national was in 98 here in Virginia. And I actually ran my dog and his litter brother, who a very good friend of mine had purchased at the same time. Um, we ran the junior hunt test and we both qualified in juniors. And wow. then the next year, um, Annie, champion rip snorers, lightning, uh, lightning strike, was uh, best of opposite sex at the national in Wisconsin to Jane Myers and the famous Drakkar Wildfire Bentley. And then it kind of just progressed from there. Um, Annie was bred twice to Mm Drakkar and produced Mallory, who was uh, Mountain View's next strike. And then she produced Oakley and Scout, the two boys. Um, And then that's kind of, if you go back any of the top dogs, I think I looked yesterday, the last, you know, 10 national specialty winners 
have those two dogs in their pedigree. They either have Mallory Fascinating. and um, Scout or Oakley, you know, in their, in their pedigree. So, wow. Um, so it's really been an influential gene. Matt, uh, Annie, Annie was the starting point champion rip snorters lightning stripe she was the starting point and then mallory was a bitch that i bred that was my foundation bitch and then moved forward with her and she was bred three times and she won the national as a veteran she won the local the regional and the national in 2007 and wow. um oakley was winner's dog and her son and scout the litter mate was opposite to mallory one of those days Oh so and then Scout's, Scout's career took off, yeah. and Helen Helen won um, the national with him in two thousand eight and two thousand and nine, um, and Matt uh, Oakley went to Brazil for a short amount of time, and mm -hmm. then came back and um, won the national in eleven, twelve, and thirteen. Wow. So my first national specialty winner, though, that I owned was a dog um, out of the Annie. Dracar breeding in 2001, and his okay. name was Sosa. Dracar and uh, Viva, first man up, and he was owned by Terrence Bolden and Joyce Wilkinson and myself. That okay. was my first national specialty winner. So and he was, was a lot more after that. <laughs> well, Oakley and Scout were repeat. We did a breeding twice, which is kind of unheard of. We did, we bred Annie to Dracar once, and right. Terrence had that litter and produced Sosa, my first national specialty winner. As soon as they turned two and we did the health testing, I repeated it. And Got then it. I was the breeder on the litter that produced Oakley and Scout and several other very nice Mountain View dogs that were influential yeah. Um, yeah. In, the, in pedigrees. And uh, all total, it's been seven nationals were won by dogs that either I've bred or owned in the past wow. 19 years, 18 years. Yeah. So wow. I was very fortunate to meet Helen George, you know, when yeah, I that did. That combination eight, seems to work out really well. <laughs> her, her dogs, the rip snorter dogs have been influential in the breed for a lot of years. Um, and we did a lot of field work, um, mm -hmm. you know, lots of junior hunters, some senior hunters, um, then we got into NABDA, uh, the North American Versatile Hunting Dog Association. Um, we have a utility titled Dogs as well, which is the highest level. It's, it's yeah. like the master hunter plus plus because they have to do extensive water work and tracking as well. So um, it's been very important to, to be involved with the field work with the breed. They, to do um, what it was bred to do. Well, yeah, it's a versatile breed. They consider the short hairs, the wire hairs, um, Brittany's, Griffon's. They're all, even the Spinonis, they're all versatile breeds. They're meant to do field work with birds, ducks, okay. you know, waterfowl. Um, but they also do fur. So they have really? to learn how to track. Yeah, they do uh, a track, um, okay. fur track. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah it's, that's a, the versatile breeds, they also call them continental breeds. They were when you could afford to have one dog in Europe, whether it was a Weimaran or a Vichela, that dog had to retrieve ducks. It had right. to hunt birds. If you shot a stag, it tracked the stag. Or if you shot, you know, needed to rabbits, you know, it would retrieve a rare rabbit, track a rabbit. And they'll actually, uh, Kelly's very first dog would actually track and bay on a rabbit like a ble like a beagle no way yeah it's really interesting and the spinoni bitch that no we idea. have now is yeah. quite the rabbit hunter and see the spinoni is a versatile breed as well oh that's so fascinating i had no idea yeah there's a, there's a whole group there's 27 continental breeds that are recognized by nab of course we don't have them all here in the united states there's um sure monster landers small and large monster landers and a few other uh breeds that are very aggressive do it all type of high drive uh, yeah <laughs> high drive prey drive type you know uh dogs fascinating let's go back to you mentioned that oakley went to brazil oh, i know yes. you have a long time connection with victor we and do. why with, don't you tell us about how that got started and and how that's worked for you it 
they, they're they wonderful friends. We have wonderful connections in Brazil and many, many uh, friends that we consider family um, mm -hmm. in Brazil. Uh, we went to the National in Ren Lake in 20, 2007 when Mallory won the National, and we met Livia and Max Craner, who were from Brazil. And Mr. Malzoni had seen a beautiful white dog named Mac the night win the group at Trenton. Um, I believe under Pat Trotter, maybe. Okay. And he was just, he loved this dog and he had to have this, had to have a wire hair. Yeah. So Max and Livia, who worked for him, ran the kennel. One of his kennels came to the U.S. and they were at the National and they approached us. We had a young, um, a young dog it was a litter mate of oakley's that was white that was uh, that they were you know asking about and they and, and told us about victor and we were a little leery and like okay um you know when somebody yeah. from a foreign country approaches you about the dogs and we had oakley there and they they liked him they loved scout they thought scout was beautiful um we had a sister there her name was derby and and um so they were very interested in the dogs most of the people weren't conversing with them. At this point, the Brazilian connection wasn't, was just starting to occur. You know, now there's lots of Brazilian dogs and Brazilian handlers. So we had a wonderful time with them. They were, you know, interested in dogs, asking about puppies. And, um, you know, we said, well, this is what we've got, you know, and um, we kept in touch with them over the year. And then the next year they came back to the national in, I believe it was in Washington, Eastern Washington. And, um, we, that's where I realized that they were into Crestons, which was something else that I'm very involved in. Oh, and they were like, let's go to dinner. And I was like, can't go because we've got to go watch Crestons. And they were like, really? Yeah. So long story short, we talked to them at length about Oakley. Oakley wasn't at the National with us. Um, at that point, he went winner's dog and we put him up and the brother was right. being shown. We had another great visit with them and they were like, look, this is what we want. We're looking for a dog for Max to show next year. Mr. Malzoni wants to campaign a dog in the United States the year after, which he had a bitch um, that Jane Myers was showing at the time. Okay. And he was looking for one that he could take to the next level. And I wow. said, well, I have this young dog. I said, he's been shown. He'd won a few groups. Kelly'd won a few groups on him. She'd won a couple specialties, but we'd pretty much just been sitting on him because the brother was, and the brother broke the record, the best in show record. At, I think he sure. had 45 and, you know, he was doing a ton of winning and it was like, and who, who was showing him? That was Frank Murphy. Frank Helen Murphy. George showed him in the beginning. Right. And then um, Frank took over for Kiki Cortellis was the owner and um, did a great job with the dog. I mean, he blew the record away. We were very excited. And so we said, look, I said, I'll bring Oakley down to you. And I said, we can talk about it, but I said, I'm not going to guarantee that I'm going to leave him. Because yeah. there was a weekend of shows in Sao Paulo. And I said, you know, I'll bring the dog down. Sure. You know, we'll go to the dog show. We'll see how it is. We'll see what the kennel looks like. But I want, a round, I want a round trip ticket for the dog. Right, right, right. right. Well, needless to say, we got down there. And these people that we made friends with, it, it was an incredible visit. And Oakley stayed in Brazil. And that was in March okay. of 2000, I guess, 2010. Mm -hmm. And we sat at a table with Mr. Malzoni and he said, I want to keep the dog. I want to campaign the dog. I have a dog and uh, he had a dog with Jay Myers at the time. Actually it was a bitch and um, she won't be done for a year, but we would like to have Oakley here in Brazil. And it was March. So we brought him down, left him. Max yeah. Craner showed him till October. And the deal was I wanted Phil Booth. And that was the make or break for me. Um, I didn't want to sell the dog. Yeah. You know, I wanted Phil Booth to show the dog. That was the deal. That was my only thing I wanted was Phil to have the yeah. dog. Because Phil had shown a really nice bitch and got the bitch best in show record a few few years earlier, I guess, in the early 2000s. And I always thought if I ever had a really good stallion of a dog, male dog, that's who I would want to have it. That, that's the fit. <laughs> that was the guy. I just knew he yeah. could get it done. So...